Hello there. With all the great stuff my colleagues have shown you, you want to get practical with mobile learning, don't you? I know you do. In this podcast, I will try to get you curious enough to check out at least one new mobile learning tool, just for your own pleasure, or to plan a mobile learning activity. I will limit myself to cell phones and smartphones to deliver content and have learning or training interactions. If you are interested in setting up a bigger mobile phone project or a mobile learning pilot, it is always good to plan ahead. Judy Brown, a great mobile learning guru, has set together an easy two-page PDF checklist for those of you who want to start with such a project. The link is down below at the end of this podcast together with all the other links. This podcast has two big chunks, simple cell phone use for education or training and smartphone tools for education or training. During this podcast, I will provide some mobile tools and I will try to add some examples wherever possible. First of all, regular cell phones. As Kirk indicated, even regular cell phones offer the possibility to start learning outside of the classroom or training center. You can easily use SMS, the voice recorder or the actual phone communication capacities for this purpose. But in case the cell phone is equipped with a camera, this. You can also start using the phone to take and share pictures and movies. All these options can be used in the learning or training environment. Let me give you some examples. Let's start with the school environment. You just imagine that you are giving a history class, your city's history. Then you could ask your students to go out and gather pictures or movies with their cell phones. You give them a certain amount of time, you split them into groups and you allow them to gather information which they will share with all of the class, including the teacher afterwards. And of course, you, some of the groups of students will have masses of pictures and movies taken. But if you ask them to select just the 10 best or most relevant pictures that are directly connected to their city's history, the students will learn even more while discussing and selecting these medias. I must confess I didn't come up with this myself, of course, nor with any other example. It is actually a cell phone project built in the UK. Link down below. Corporate. In a corporate environment, simple cell phones can also be of use, even for informal learning. If engineers are asked to gather pictures or examples that reflect the best or worst examples in their field of expertise, like some bad welding, these pictures can become the basis of a database that doesn't only deliver an overview of what is perceived as best and worst, but which can also be used to discuss how to solve these worst case scenari uh, engineering scenarios. So, all you need for using regular phones in a learning environment is creativity. Mobile learning is all about learning. These are only the carriers. Let's walk to part two of the podcast. Smartphones. I will cover three mobile possibilities with smartphones. Smartphone marketplace, QR codes and mobile social media. What is a smartphone marketplace? A mobile marketplace is nothing else than a portal which gathers and offers all the applications that were built for your particular phone family. A phone family is a group of smartphones that runs on a particular operating system, like Andre already mentioned. The biggest mobile families are Blackberry, Apple for the iPhone, Nokia, which operating system is called Symbian, Windows Mobile and the Android platform. Each one of these has a marketplace where you can download a mobile application, sometimes for free, sometimes for a bit of money. This application is nothing else than a little piece of software which lets you perform an action on your phone that wasn't possible before, for example, a basic calculus application for school purposes or sales versus stock program for corporate purposes. So, you might not need to build a course. Sometimes these mobile applications can be the basis of a mobile learning activity. 
Because the marketplace is specialized per operating system, you can safely download an application. Remember, if you want to install an application for the first time and you don't feel certain about how to do it, ask a younger family member or a geek of any age that already has some experience. We are living in a network age. Look around and ask for help. I asked my programming nephew to assist me with my first smartphone. After he demonstrated it, I felt much more confident to explore the rest of it myself. Next part, QR codes. Although the word seems to indicate something very technical, that is not the case. A QR code is the equivalent of a barcode that you can find on any supermarket product, the black and white code. A QR code looks like this. And it enables any smartphone equipped with a camera to read the code and perform an immediate action which the code tells it to do. For example, go to this URL, get some content, get some information. All it demands is that you install a small mobile application on your phone. The nice thing about this is that it also allows you to understand how easy it is to download an application onto your smartphone. So it's a nice thing to do to explore as a first mobile application to add to your smartphone. The application you need to install on your uh, mobile is called a QR code reader. A really great QR code reader that is also available for loads of smartphones is the B-tag link below. Now, of course, in order to get this, of course, now you ask me, how can I get such a QR code? That is also easy and free. Look at the link at the end of the podcast, the QR code maker. You simply type in the information you want it to display, and then you say, make the QR code. Nothing more, nothing less. You grab the picture, you copy it, and you use it wherever you want it. With QR codes, you can plan a field trip where the QR codes are used as triggers for content via the smartphone. It is also not necessary to provide a smartphone for every student. You can just do it with groups, as with SMS, as with the regular cell phone groups. The QR code can give some simple information. For example, what type of tree it is, where the QR code was put on, when that same tree uh, carries fruits, etc. So it can help to deepen the understanding of the real world while standing in the middle of it. A corporate example is real estates. Real estates are using it to give up-to-date information on houses that are on sale or for rent. The nice thing about QR codes is that it allows you to adjust the content on the back end. It means, although the QR codes remain the same, you can alter the information it sends and these alterations are done behind the scenes so the user doesn't notice it. Now, mobile social media. Facebook, Flickr, Picasa, Twitter, all of these media use the same principles as we have seen in the unit discussing social media. To access these media, you need to register, fill in a username, password, and from there on you can freely log in to stay in tune with what is exchanged in these media. Most of these social medias offer their networking possibilities for both computers and smartphones. So what you need to look for is the mobile option of these media. Just roam through the social media site of your own choice and see what you need to do to enable mobile access. Sometimes the smartphones are already equipped with mobile social media shortcuts, like this. See the Facebook one, the YouTube one. Now, in the school or corporate example, you can set up Facebook groups for your class or uh, colleagues and share pictures or audio stories in the field via directly uploaded media and actually discuss them in that Facebook group between peers with the teacher or the trainer. Colin also mentioned iTunes U, which is a great to check out and test with your, either your school or corporation. And it is free as he mentioned. Wrapping up. Mobile learning is easy, just engage in some mobile learning, it's fun. But remember what Robin said, always look for accessibility, necessity and practicality. Links down below. Thank you for your time.